Uh, today we're going to talk about more into wine. Uh, I don't know how many of you did try Mimino yesterday. Oh, good. <laughs> did you also try to compare it with tap water on the side? <laughs> okay, did anyone feel any difference from drinking? Um, maybe it's difficult to, if you don't have a preference to compare it with, but do you feel any difference? Did you feel the sensation? Was it longer to taste afterwards or did it kill the wine? Was it okay? Yeah. So, as you all know, the water is the silent companion to any food and wine. Uh, that's something we want to change. We want the water to be something that you talk about and that you care about around the dinner table. And I think I think the most people that drink wine uh, and enjoy wine knows that wine and food can be a perfect marriage if you have the right combinations. But what a lot of people don't know is that if you drink the wrong water to your wine, it would actually kill a good wine. But if you had the right water to your wine, it can really enhance the whole experience. So uh, just to give you a little bit short intro how it works. Uh, the water affects the taste of your wine because the water contains minerality. Uh, it has a pH level. It can be carbonated or can be still. And the, uh, the minerality, the pH level, and the carbonation level interacts with the wine's acidity, tannins, flavors, and complex texture. So, therefore, it can destroy a good glass of wine or it can greatly enhance it. But it's not just about the mineral level, it's also about the mineral composition. And I think that also comes to food. Uh, you have this, you have calcium, you have sodium, you have magnesium, and you have silica, and you have other minerals as well. But these four minerals play a significant <coughs> role when it comes to how it interacts with the wine. Because some minerals fit better to some styles of wine, and some minerals really destroy the taste of a good wine like calcium, for example, it can fit really well to full-bodied white wines, but if you drink it to a red wine, it makes the red wine become bitter, it takes away the fruitiness of the wine. And that was something that we experienced when we had a lot of wine and water tasting during a long time. And we also experienced, it's not just about still water or carbonated water, it's a lot about the combination level, because if you have this super super light combination or like effervescent it really can awake your taste buds and cure longer taste of the wine in the combination with the minerals but if you have a really strong combination it really numbs your taste buds and really take away all the flavors it also if you drink distilled water especially to red wines it also like take away all the taste and the only thing you have left in your mouth is the tannins the bitterness so there's also a really uh, important player when it comes to making the perfect match with your wine. So how did we come up with this crazy idea to create a collection of water designed to harmonize with different styles of wine? Uh, Pietra, you are all know her, uh, we met at the school, uh, Base of Communication, and we were both working with Insights for a long time. I worked on a communication agency, and Pietra on a big telecom company. And then our last assignment was to look at the bottled water with no taste, because they thought that must be so difficult to find a new communication strategy for water. Because water is just water. Water has no taste. So when we tried to start our to experience water, we realized water has taste. So of course we can do something with that. And then we also found this article from 2010. It's from a famous, it's from a big newspaper. Uh, and well, it's a woman called, her name is Susanne Bailen Kranz, and she was pairing water with different styles of wine, then she described what happened. So we thought that this is really interesting, maybe we can do something with that, because it cannot be just one water that fits all styles of wine. And during this journey, we had five main insights, and the first one, we looked 
look at the sommelier. The sommelier was, we think, is the new rock star when it comes to restaurants. The chef has been a rock star for a long time. Uh, we have more and more super songs in UK and in the U uh, US. It's really well educated. In Sweden, there's more and more people that study to become sommeliers. Not just people that want to work in a restaurant, but also people that are just interested and have wine as a passion to learn more. And people are also more educated when it comes to wine. And the second insight was, it's not, when you look at the dinner table, it's all about ex new experiences to get a better experience around the table. Uh, and also when it comes to wine, you drink wine from different glasses because you know that it affects the taste as well. Like Riedel, for example. And then the third uh, insight, of course, had to look at the commercial potential. And the first trend that we were looking into is the strong mega trend in health that we drink less, but we drink better. A lot of people don't drink alcohol at all, but if we drink something, we want to drink something good and we want to not drink that much. And then they have the crafted beverage trend. When it comes to beer, we're not just drinking lager anymore, we're drinking, we drink a lot of crafted beer. And you also see the same trend when it comes to gin and the tonic and the non alcoholic. So we think this is a category that will really increase and change during the next years. And then the bottle water was growing. It overtook soft, drink, soft drinks in the US 2016, even though it's a lot of flavored water as well. And then we were looking at the premium bottle of water, and it also was growing a lot, and it's still growing. And predicted to reach 224 billion in two, uh, 2021. And then, of course, we also had to look at the wine market, and the wine market is really huge, and it's growing. Uh, it's growing especially in Europe and in the US, but also if you look at China, a lot of people start drinking wine there, and they're importing a lot of wine, especially from Europe. And in the next years, China will be the biggest country in the world that will produce wine. So, yeah, this will happen a lot there, a lot there as well. So we thought, yeah, we have a market opportunity of water to wine. Maybe we can do something. <laughs> and then inside number four, uh, when we start looking at the sources in Sweden, we realized that all of them are really low in mineralities, reality, so it will be really difficult because the first idea that we had was to maybe we can find four different spring sources, just as you do, Ma. Uh, it's really interesting, but then we realized you can't find four different spring sources in Sweden and with the right mineralogy because we have to find the different combinations. Then we have to go abroad and that would be super expensive and also not just <coughs> also really difficult with logistic and environmental perspective. So we thought maybe we can be creative. And then the insight number five, everyone who works in the water business know that the production line, yes, is really, really <laughs> tough. And you have to have the perfect production line when you're going to produce water. Because water is water and you see everything. It's not like a soda, you can have something, you never know what's in the bottom really. If there's something left from another type of production, flavors or something. So uh, therefore, we decided to push the boundaries of bottled water and create our own unique category. Water to wine. And just as you have a winemaker, why can't you have a water maker? So what we do, we infuse water, as spring water, with natural minerals. The same minerals as you find in the spring source. And this is how it works. As I said before, we need to have a, now we were just working with Swedish spring source. It has to have a super low TDS, natural minerals, and we're just working with the super light combination. Today our whole collection has a really light combination, but we will also develop uh, still water in the summer. And when we choose the source, it, as I said before, it has to be low in TDS, but it also has it has to be low in sodium and calcium because these two minerals really affect the taste of the wine. So depending on the wine style, um, it will work better and some it will really feel. 
And then we also look at the virginality because that's also really important. And I think everyone that works in the premium <coughs> water category they really care about that because that's really important that it has protected from agricultural industries. And we want to have a nitrate level under one, and in Sweden, the most resources is under one. And then also we need to have a really good production line, and we want to have the story behind your source. And uh, we can work with four sources today in Sweden. So today we work with one, and it's Pola Brun. It's one of the oldest spring sources in Sweden, and it's located in the middle of Sweden, really far away from industries agriculture in the rugged woods of Sweden. And this is an old classic spring source where people were traveling back in the days for cure. And the procedure from idea to where we are now, uh, yeah, it's been taking so much more time than we could ever imagine. <laughs> I think I was talking to a lot of other people about producing water. You think it's going to be so easy? Is how, how difficult could it be to produce something like this? My God, <laughs> this is the most difficult thing you can do, and especially if you're going to work with somebody else. They are so skeptic, and they have a lot of uh, ideas, and you have also have to be really educated if you're going to talk about water to wine. But we started 2011 when we came up with the idea, but we didn't do anything. But then 2016, I had a dinner with one of Sweden's best sommelier, Andreas Larsson, and he won the championship in 2007, and I asked him, Andreas, do you think water really affects the taste of the wine, or is this just a really crazy idea? And he was like, yes, Kunep, of course it affects the taste of the wine. I always choose different styles of water when I drink wine. And he had worked for something like Vino and like Montana for many years, because they're sponsoring everything, as you know. They're pretty big, they sponsor chefs, they sponsor sommeliers. And he said, yeah, I like Aquatana and something Vino, but I don't work the old styles of wine. So I think it's a good idea. So then I called Petra and I said, Petra, it's time to do something and <laughs> something new. Uh, so I quit my work and she quit her work and now we're working parallel with developing Vino and consulting. And then we got in contact with Sole Sommerström. I think some of you talked to her yesterday, our master blender. And she's well renowned in Sweden. She's a famous sensoric and also one of the traders behind, uh, behind Absolute Vodka. And she also worked with uh, tap water for many years. And she said, Oh, I'm retired now. I'm not going to work anymore. But this is so, this sounds really interesting. Of course, I'm going to help you. But if I'm going to do this, I want to work with some kind of dance. And that was the famous sommelier who wrote the article back in 2010. We were like, oh, this is a sign from above. <laughs> <laughs> the circle is closed. Yes, we have to do this together. And then we started. Uh, and then we had a lot of, lot of test bed. We had the first test bed, and we just st start trying a lot of water from all around the world. We also just tried to drink magnesium, calcium, sodium, just to see how it tasted. Um, and then we invited not just sommeliers, but also wine lovers, our target group, to see what they thought, if they liked it or not, uh, during one year. And then we get a lot of feedback, and then we adjusted the recipes. And then we tried the, the new recipes again on our target group. And then finally, we had the perfect recipes. Of course, you can always change stuff, but we are continuously developing new recipes and adjusting so it will be the best marriage to wine. And then during 2007-18, we launched during the Swedish Championship here in Stockholm. Because that's our target group, and they are really important if you want to get into a restaurant, you have to work with the sommeliers. And uh, that was also a big learning, because I, I like to drink a good glass of wine, but had no knowledge about wine. So I had to start in my education, so now I bought wine sommelier, they set three, and I'm also the first Swedish water sommelier. Because if you're going to work in this industry, you have to have knowledge. And knowledge is power when you work with water and you work with wine. So this is our team. Elise, some of you met as well, the other ones I've talked about before. And then we have Charlotte Gritman, she was also there yesterday, helping us with marketing and PR. And Chris was also there, he's helping us with sale.
I just want to show you some funny pictures. This is how we went. We started to get to know the water business. We went to CNN 2016, and then what they were talking already then about the premium of the water and how it was growing. But it was most about flavored water, functional, functional waters. So we were just trying to get an idea if someone else was doing something similar. And this is how it looks when you work with production. <laughs> Uh, this is Pietra in Solveig's uh, lab, uh, where do we have our own small combination equipment, so we can do it really small scale. And uh, here is our first test batch, it's just 33 centiliters bottles. We didn't put any effort into a nice design, because we wanted people not to look at the bottle, we wanted people to really um, taste the water, because that's that's different. It's like this, we had to like get out the recipe. So this is the first test batch, and we had a different name there back then. It was Parilla, but we had to change that. There's also something you learn during your journey. It's difficult <laughs> to get your name registered in all the different countries. Uh, and here is during the Swedish Sommelier Championship. Uh, we had over hundreds of water wine tasting, and people were so skeptic in the beginning because we had a good tap water in Sweden. But then 98% agreed that the Mabina was so much better than the tap water, so it was really good to be there. And uh, Andreas Larsson, the world champion, who won the world championship 2007, uh, he decided to join our team this summer. And that was really important for us because we realized that we're going to go globally, but also in Sweden. It's, it's important to have work with key influencers when it comes to some years. And he's a really big influencer, especially in Asia. And he is also one of the members in the Global Sommelier Association. And he's arranging a blind tastings all around the world. So he has a lot of knowledge about wine but also about water because it worked with somebody being on the panel before. And then we have an advisory board, uh, because we need it as well. We are just two people working full time, so you can ask questions. And Steve here, he helped us a lot. Thank you, Steve. He was the first one to be in our uh, advisory board. And then we also have uh, other competent people as well. I'm just going to describe a little bit how each Bivina works. Uh, if you will try this today, you get a short introduction. But it's a collection of four. And the first, we had two for white wines, and we had two for red wines. And Mivino number one is for light, crispy white wines. Uh, and this water contains a really low minerality, 89 in uh, TDS. Uh, because really light, crispy white wines, if you pair them with higher minerality, it will really destroy the taste. And then the full body white wines, like Oak Chardonnay, uh, or uh, White Rioja, for example, uh, we have maybe the number two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and this has, uh, also, it has a little higher mineral content. And to this one we add a little bit extra calcium because the calcium uh, get, gives the water the same texture and smoothness as the wine. And then to light, to light, fruity, complex, and elegant red wines like Barolo, Pinot Noir, the one a little bit lighter in the color, uh, we have maybe the number three. And to this one, we add a little bit extra of sodium because it's open up the wines better uh, and also the fruitiness. And then we have Mivino number four for full bodied red, rich, rich red wines like Amarone, Rianca, Chateau de Pape. And this water has a semi high mineral context to match the complex flavors of those wines. So, so we think and we believe that Mivino is the missing link to successful food and wine pairing. Uh, and it's also important, I think, because it's a collection, so it can also be a new revenue stream for the restaurants. Because instead of just putting in tap water or something else at the restaurant, they can really 
uh, increase the sale of the seats by adding the vino and also adds uh, extra experience around the table and also the chef will not lose the, the link between the food and the wine so you will have a better experience all around the table and our target group uh, our target group is not the people in Sweden we have this picture here who sets vin the table wine a lot of people just order a glass of wine, red wine, they don't know even what type of grape it is or where it comes from. Uh, it's the cheapest wine on the menu. That's not our target group. But I used to compare it with the people who just want to steal or spark the water. <laughs> so with that, we're collaborating with Starbandis. It's a new service in Sweden and they are working with the restaurants. They were recently launched in Toronto, London, New York. And they're going to launch in France as well. And this is a service where you can go in and look at the wine list. So if you're going to go to a restaurant, you can go in there and see if you have a wine that you want to drink for the night. So this is our target group. We want to talk to the people that really want to drink good wine. And the people that are interested in both wine menus and soon also water menus. And if you look at our global target group, uh, of course it's wine lovers, both female and male. People who buy a little bit more exclusive wine or are a little bit more passionate and interested in wine. But also for fine dining, as I said before, this summer year is the new rock star, and 80% ask for advice when they go to fine dining restaurant to the sommelier. So therefore the sommelier is our target group because he can also help us introduce the water. And now we have the lounge and brunch wine. Who, who wants to indulge yourself during the lunch? Then you can have one glass of wine, but they can also have a glass of water so they can continue working. It's also something that's growing in Stockholm right now. And then business meetings. Uh, you can stay focused and you can drink more. So you have just a glass of wine and then you have to work on the side. And then a woman who loves wine is also, a woman who loves wine is also a growing uh, category segment <laughs> and then the competitive landscape uh, of course all premium water is our competitors but we don't see you as a competitors we see us we think we should all work together because just as you have a wine list you should, why should you have a water list so I think really we should help each other to get into the fine dining restaurants and get people talking about wine uh, and the most of the waters today don't, is not able to pair with wine and as long as we know we're the only category of water that actually add minerals to fit different styles of wine and if you look at the big competitive landscape uh, of course there are other brands as well but if you look at the big ones it's San Pellegrino and Aquapana and this is how they uh, look at their market. San Pellegrino is for all the red wines and Aquapana is for all the white wines. And then we have Hilton. They say that their water fits all styles of wine. Uh, and then we have Tirol Steiner uh, also talking about water to wine and that's I think a little bit strange because it's really high in minerals so it really will affect the taste of the wine. And then we have Milvino so it's a new that's new category so we have four different ones and maybe we'll have more later and the challenges i think it's important to talk about the challenges as well uh, yes is to start a company like this in sweden you really have to to show everyone that the tap water is not everything because we really love our tap water here in Sweden and people are not used to buy water at all <coughs> only on the, on the go we buy a lot of flavored water but we don't buy normal water like premium bottled water and if you go to a restaurant you find you're happy if they have a spring water on the menu and it's mostly in the Italian restaurants it's Aquapanna or San Pellegrino and then the skeptic sommeliers. So yeah, a lot of skeptic sommeliers because you don't talk about the water in the education. So you have to educate them and you have to show them. So Petra and I always say trying is believing. So it takes a lot of time to get out there and let people try and experience Mendino. Uh, and then the f first mover, 
first mover on the market is also really expensive and also really difficult because no one has done it before. So we really have always have to go out and talk about it to show people. And expensive, <laughs> much more expensive than we thought from the beginning to, to work with, uh, to start a company in the water business. There's a lot of logistic, um, uh, warehouse. Uh, if you're a small company, you have to, uh, you know, the bottles is more expensive. Everything. And then you have Nestle and these other market leading brands with a lot of money and a lot of muscles. Uh, but I think it's just like. Um, to cross the beer trend. I think something will shift in the water business as well, because people will start caring about what they put in the glass, in the water glass. More and more people will experience that water has taste, and they don't want to buy just water from the big brands. They want to have something unique, they want to have a unique story, um, they want to have a better quality. So, conclusion. Uh, Water affects the taste of the wine. So if you're going to drink water to your wine, uh, you should have a water that fits the style of the wine. Of course, there are other waters on the market that fits different styles of wine, but there are no other water that actually fits all styles of wine. So to make it easy, you can order Vivino. Um, and it also gives the restaurant the revenue stream, because now they have a collection that they can offer at the table. Uh, and as I said before, another conclusion is if you're going to work in the water business, you should really, for me, self care has been really important to have the right people uh, on board, like with really good sommeliers, but also getting your own education to get a better knowledge and better understanding for the whole category. Okay, thank you so much. showing them we had like one glass of Nubino and then they compared it with one glass of tap water and then we also had another the biggest mineral water brand on the market is Sweden the Ram Dasa it's really high sodium content so they could feel the effect that was happening when they drink different water to the wine so then it was pretty easy because you really have and also if you just try the Nubino collection without wine and you start with one two three or four you feel the difference you feel it has taste so and you also get a better understanding that water has taste. So that's how we convinced them. And that's why we realized first it was trying to get into restaurants and do all this water tasting, but it took a lot of time. So we decided we had to work with the Somali Association. So that was, that's why we sponsored the championship. So we could do all this tasting with all the sommeliers in one place. Yeah, that's, that's, a good, that's a good question because uh, we, uh, because it's a new category, we also have to educate people. Uh, right now we are doing a lot of education by ourselves. We're going out to the restaurant and we have a small introduction and we also have like an onboard document where they can read how it works. Uh, now we're also going to do a lot of YouTube movies to help the staff so they can get a better understanding. And we try to be pretty pedagogic when it comes to how we describe the wines of the bottle. Um, yeah, but it's a lot of education. And we are calling them all the time and try to help them to sell better. And also having like sales competitions in restaurants. And um, we're also trying to work with wine distributors. Today we have one in the south of Sweden because they know the wine. 
and if we educate them, it will also be easier to sell the water for them. And they, so that's how we work. We have to sell. <laughs> No, no, nothing else. So, so we, the water doesn't have calories or anything? No, no, of course. <laughs> In Sweden, we know we have, <laughs> don't have calories. No, 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 it's just directly from the spring source and then we add the minerals. So nothing else. It's not processed or nothing else added. And the other observation is that I think it's really interesting because it's a portfolio of waters. So red lights match to wine, but you could also imagine that a restaurant that doesn't want to match it to wine could also have from one company four different waters that would match with four different foods very easily. And there's another company, a fine Nordic with raw, working on a similar concept where they have uh, multiple springs under one brand. So that's kind of a hybrid between a single brand and a portfolio distribution. I think it's also some, a trend that we will see more and more in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>